everyone, my name's Annette and welcome to Cotta Verde. In today's video we're going to be pruning roses or I'm going to be pruning roses and I'll just talk you through how I do it. I'm not an expert but I have been doing it for a few years. Roses are quite robust. I found it's very difficult to wreck a rose. When you're pruning them, you can get very hung up on how to do it right. It's hard to make a mistake because the roses will grow back. So let's start with one of my favorite roses, which is a Cheshire rose. It's a ground cover rose. Um, so it grows about two foot high. It's about 60 centimeters and three foot wide, which I guess nearly a meter. Um, and it's a lovely, light pink colour. There is variation. There are a lot of petals on this rose and they come in like little clusters. I do find with my Cheshire roses that they flower throughout the summer. They go really well with the lavender I've got planted in the bed because the growth can be quite rapid. It's good to have sort of some stakes to sort of prop them up off the ground. You don't want them growing upright but you kind of want to support the very long stems so that the flower heads on the end don't drag the whole thing down onto the ground. I have actually pruned two of these. I forgot that I did it, but I must have pruned them earlier. But those are the stakes that I use to sort of prop up. Um, you can sort of push them in through here and they prop up any stems that might be falling over. So I'm just going to take off that spindly thing there. And even though there are some little buds on that spindly thing there, I don't think it's going to be any good. And that's dead. So I'll take that off. There are a couple of dead bits in here. So I'm just going to take those off without cutting my watering system. Oh, if you can see Max. Max has come to visit. I can see a little bud down here and it's pointing that way. I don't really want to cut to this bud which is pointing this way. So I'm going to cut down to that bud down there. I know it looks harsh but I just don't want those two crossing and then hopefully this bud down here is going to shoot off in this direction which will be really good. Um, what we've got here is a very open framework. Everything's pointing outwards. I seem to have another lovely new shoot coming up there. So you can see here how I held a stem up with one of the stakes that I have. It's the leftover roses from last year. And this is damaged here. So if I bring you closer, hopefully you can see that I've opened up the middle. I have chopped back all the spindly growth and there isn't any more dead wood in there. But the next roses that I'm going to prune are called Queen of Sweden. I have three of these and I absolutely love them. They grow to about four foot by three foot. They start as like an apricotty pink and then they turn to a lovely soft pink. They have a medium fragrance. I think they're really, really pretty. I have seen photos of Queen of Sweden hedges and they look amazing. Um, but I've got three planted in a group. We did have these growing in a different area of the garden where we'd kind of placed them temporarily whilst we prepared this bed. And then last year we moved them over here um, and they didn't respond to that particularly well. They're still alive, but I had very few roses. So what I should mention also is that after I've pruned everything, I'm going to give everything a top dressing of blood, fish and bone. It's widely available and it's really nutritious. It's good for the plants. It's a little bit pongy, but um, uh, it's really good to sort of top dress everything. You could scrape it in with a fork, but um, if it doesn't rain in the next few days, I will definitely water it in. So this is the first Queen of Sweden that I'm going to prune. And I think you should be able to see there in the center that there's quite a lot of dead. I'm just going to chop that out. So this has got some growth going up there, but I don't want the dead bit and I don't want too many twiddly little things. I'm 
Okay, so blood fish and bone, just scattering it around. Having come in for lunch, I've discovered that half of my recordings this morning uh, didn't have any sound. Beginner's error. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about the roses uh, that I pruned uh, when the sand was off. So the first rose was a David Austin Tranquility. It was very kindly gifted to us by a close friend when our kitten Jack died uh, during lockdown last year. Um, it was very traumatic and sad but actually the rose is such a wonderful reminder of Jack. We absolutely adored him. The rose is a beautiful rose. It will grow four foot by four foot. Uh, it's about one and a quarter meters by one and a quarter meters. Um, it's a white rose, it's fluffy, it's statuesque and uh, actually it's just the perfect reminder. The second rose that I pruned was a Lady Salisbury. Again it's a David Austin. It's a lovely light pink rose that repeat flowers all summer long. It grows to four foot by about three and a half foot. Um, it's really beautiful, it has a lovely scent. So the third rose that I pruned was another David Austin called Litchfield Angel, a gorgeous cream coloured rose that grows about four and a half foot by four and a half foot. And again, this rose didn't put on much growth last year because we transplanted that one from a different area of the garden where it had just been waiting uh, to be put in its correct spot. Here at the front of our property, we've planted three David Austin James Galway climbing roses. They are a lovely, luscious pink colour on the outside, fading to paler pink on the inside. I absolutely love this rose and these have been in for three or four years now maybe. We got them in quite quickly. The driveway's not finished yet, um, but I wanted to make sure we had some beautiful roses climbing up the front of the house. We have got these climbing along wire trellis that Richard painstakingly put in under my direction. Um, it's galvanized wire with um, turnbuckles so that we can tighten it. Anyway, I'll show you how I pruned these about two weeks ago now, I think, um, and talk you through it. With roses, if you train them horizontally, along the horizontal length, each little buds will form a new shoot and then you'll get roses on those new shoots. So actually, if you train climbing roses, rather than just going straight up, if you train them horizontally, you'll get more roses. Um, and also you won't just have a top heavy rose where it only blooms at the top, you'll have roses all the way up. So that is my aim. I haven't been 100% successful because in fact, I think we only put the wires up last year. So the roses had two years unaided to grow. So starting at the bottom, if you come along the first branch, you can see at each join there is growth and each one of these will form new roses. This is slightly not what's expected but I was reluctant to cut it all off but you can see that it breaks at each one and there'll be a new shoot that shoots upwards. This long stem here that goes straight up has got no little side shoots coming off it but I have bent it over and I'm hoping this year these will break but you can see where this one comes up and bends over, it's breaking. When I say breaking, I mean like the buds are forming into new shoots. I don't mean that it's actually breaking, it's not. It is important to keep an eye on your roses and when you see little bugs trying to eat your new shoots, spray them off. You can use a mild dish washer, uh, you know, washing up liquid and water solution or you can use a rose spray. It's up to you. When you spray, spray all sides because they hide inside. Can you see them hiding in there? So that's it for today's rose pruning. Um, I just want to say thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos then do subscribe to my channel. Um, but thanks a lot and see you next time.